Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Um, please come grab a seat. And can I say um, a very, very warm welcome um, to HPSN UK. For some of you, this is day two, so thank you for staying. Um, and for some of you, I know you've just come today. So my name is Amanda Wilford, and I work as part of the Academy, which is the education and training part of CAE. And you'll see some of the Academy folks around today. So just before we get going, um, a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do. Uh, there are no fire alarms planned for today. So if you do hear a fire alarm, please make your way to the nearest exits that are marked. Um, and also just a couple of things about the program. So hopefully everybody's got something like this. Fantastic. So today at one o'clock, there is a really wonderful poster walk. So please, um, to present using your poster, there's some fantastic work that came in this year. So grab your lunch, come and join us. It's where the lunch is being served. For, I know a few of our poster presenters are, are worried about not loading. So Jamie, at the end of this session, will be opposite registration to finish off loading your posters. So please be reassured. We also had a request. Yesterday, 13 people won three became basic life support providers. Our thanks to Karen for training for health. So well done, everyone. Um, and people said, could they have another session? So if you would like, you, you can do 20 people. Um, in the Rose Garden room at 1 o'clock, um, Karen will run another basic life support session if you would like to get certified for this year. So there's a, a session um, at... Let's get my at either 10.45, she can take up to 20, and she's gonna run a second session at one o'clock if that's what you'd like to do. And then my final um, announcement is, one of our speakers cannot present today, so at very short notice, um, Jacob Rahman and Arik Kubali will be now presenting the simulated fast session. So if simulated fast is something you're interested in, Arik and Jake are very kindly stepped in to do that for us. So yesterday, you actually, those of you that were here met Dr. Rabbi yeah. Amyo, who's our president of CA Healthcare. He's a cardiologist, a great simulation pioneer. So he's going to lead our opening address. So Robert. Thank you, Mandy. Welcome back to HPSN UK 2018 to those who were attending yesterday. A warm welcome to those who are joining us uh, today. Uh, yesterday, we had very good vibrations uh, here in the convention, uh, uh, HPSN UK uh, 2018. I think lots of interactions, lots of uh, very passionate speakers. So I'm just going to uh, take a look with you at some of the highlights of uh, day one. So by the way, we had yesterday the largest attendance for day one of HPSN UK. Uh, so uh, as you know, HPSN is first and foremost a network of pioneers and believers uh, who are driving simulation forward. And we have examples here of very passionate speakers that we had yesterday. So th yesterday the focus was uh, simulation technology. And I think that the, uh, pe the speakers, our peers were exceptional. So we have Devin Johns here and Bryn Baxendale. Uh, we had also a number of discussions with our old favorites. And I'm not talking about Cedrin or Ronnie, but more about uh, Moulage and Apollo. Uh, so it, that was, that was kind of cool, always very crafty. I think that in simulation, we do stuff on a shoestring, so uh, everybody was very creative with the moulage. So that's one of the uh, workshops that was uh, noteworthy. This one here, at the, uh, on the upper uh, right of the screen, with our friends from Lancashire uh, Simulation Center in Preston, they were running a Lucina workshop, and Lucina was giving birth in all sorts of positions. Uh, Lucina had a very busy day yesterday. She delivered more than 12 babies. She's got an incredible physiology. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, typically with Lucina, there are lots of family pictures. So we see that uh, she was very well uh, photographed, you know, on all the pictures. On all the pictures, people are using their smartphone and taking pictures of, of Lucina. So uh, we still don't know who's the father of those 12 babies. <laughs> There are speculations. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm not talking about Apollo on this. So uh, we had also a very well attended uh, sessions with our newest mannequin. So as you know, we launched, it was its European debut, uh, Aries. CAE Aries is our new emergency care mannequin. So uh, I think that the feedback was very positive for these sessions with our new mannequin. 
And it was great to see you comparing notes and interacting and swapping business cards. So that's what HPSN is all about, about networking and exchanging ideas and talking about how we can bring simulation to the next level. So I think that uh, that's mission accomplished. Uh, there was a lot of interest for mixed reality. Clearly, mixed reality didn't have mixed reviews. Quite the opposite. It was very positive. Um, and I think that HoloLens opened everybody's minds to the possibilities uh, that uh, mixed reality, uh, uh, augmented reality, uh, and, uh, and virtual reality can bring uh, in our world of patient safety and, uh, and improving education. Always very entertaining to look at people wearing HoloLens. Oh, they're trying to avoid tripping on stuff that's not there. And they have this wow face looking at something that doesn't exist. So, uh, so we had that uh, yesterday. It was great. <laughs> we also had a lot of fun at the evening reception, the welcome reception. That kind of turned into a picnic, I think, uh, to at one point. Uh, so you see all these uh, happy faces. I must say that the backdrop of the welcome reception was the World Cup. Uh, us Canadians don't know much about it, but uh, here the level of happiness was uneven. Uh, it seems that uh, the, Span the people from Spain were very happy yesterday. And uh, for some reason I was told not to allude to Germany at all cost. So I'm not talking about Germany. So let's talk about today. Today we have an exciting day. Uh, the focus today is simulation-based educational strategies, and we have noteworthy educators and very passionate speakers. They're all at the forefront of simulation, so we're very happy to share uh, uh, with them their knowledge. Uh, 20 years ago, some of the earliest, earliest adopters of simulation centers and high-fidelity uh, mannequins and technology were here in the UK. And still now, the UK is leading the path. You know, I think you have... Uh, very forward-thinking people here, and uh, the UK continues to be a thriving simulation community. And key researchers are contributing to the uh, base of knowledge worldwide. So I think the UK has a special influence. And this year, you're in a special situation with the repeal of the cap on simulation-based clinical hours for nursing. I think this is opening a lot of new possibilities. And I think that with a fearless community of simulation specialists, we have a very sophisticated and original approach. In that special situation, there are going to be lots of opportunities uh, to fill that gap in terms of clinical nursing hours. And, and hopefully, you can share your ideas and your thoughts with us so that we can bring uh, uh, you know, simulation at the center of that discussion. I want to thank the speakers and the presenters who are coming today to uh, enhance the, the discussion. And I look forward to learning from all of you. Now I'd like to share two news about what we're doing at CE, trying to improve patient safety, trying to transfer the best practices and the technologies from aviation safety to patient safety. As I mentioned yesterday, we're very, very passionate about improving the quality of care. It's not just about improving someone's skills in a specific procedure. It's also about having an impact on quality of care. I think that one of the uh, publications that really put figures and numbers on the, the preventable harm and its impact uh, on our healthcare systems throughout the world what was a study done in the US to Air is Human. It was published by the Institute of Medicine in 1999. And it really uh, put figures and numbers on what it is exactly that's happening in the hospitals. And obviously, we want to improve on that. And many people have made a mission of their, uh, and made it a mantra and a mission to fix these, uh, these errors that happen in our hospital. So th that passion to fix the, what was uh, unveiled by to air is human I is very relevant to our mission to all of us. So at this conference, we're exploring the theme of how we can use simulation not only to g run through the chapters of a textbook, but how the simulation center can be connected on the issues of the hospital and addressing them. And for that, we had some uh, un, uh, unsuspected support, but very much welcome. A group of independent filmmakers in the US contacted us. They have created the documentary that is uh, really focused on preventable medical errors. And it's kind of telling the CA narrative. It's showing how aviation has really increased the level of safety, created a high reliability organization, and can, how this can be transferred to healthcare. Um, it's interesting because the leader of the project is the son of late Dr. 
uh, John Eisenberg was a pioneer in patient safety in the US, and he was also the very influential director of the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality in the US until his early death in 2002. So he was also instrumental in the report to Air is Human, and the documentary is called To Air is Human. So that group approached us a few weeks ago. Uh, right now, it's only a very limited audience that had the privilege to see the movie. I had the chance to see that documentary. It's very, very compelling. It tells a great story. It's very touching. And although right now it's a very limited audience who had the chance to look at uh, the, the film, they are looking at a partnership with us, and we have a verbal agreement to give it more visibility. And it's a very professional uh, documentary, and it's really targeting a wide audience really, to you know, kind of raise the awareness on, on how we can uh, improve patient safety and improve the delivery of care. So let's watch the trailer of To Air Is Human. Both my husband, Pat, and my son, Cal, experience diagnostic errors. Cal suffered brain damage from his newborn jaundice when it was misdiagnosed. Today, he has significant cerebral palsy. And Pat, my husband, died when he was 45 from a cancer that was appropriately diagnosed, but the pathology failed to get communicated to the doctor or Pat. It was hard for us to understand and believe that this could happen in a developed country like the United States. If you look at many of the statistics as the third leading cause of death in the U.S., most people are completely unaware of that. That is the equivalent of seven or eight airliners crashing every day with no survivors. We're probably filling one Arlington cemetery every year from preventable medical harm. Most of us in medicine just said, well, that's the way it is. This is a problem that's, you know, hiding in plain sight. It's urgent. It's, it's a public health emergency. If you believe first do no harm, there is no excuse for not investing in things which will prevent Huh? We have to acknowledge that to err is human, and then to figure out what do we do with that fact in terms of building a system that's safe for patients. We got to change it. We got to make it better. And I think many people are working very hard to make it better. One of the ways to really make a difference is you've got to get patients engaged. We could prevent many, many, many of these deaths immediately if we just put in the effort. We need to think about them not as unavoidable but as unthinkable. To change patient safety, you have to change everything. We built it completely wrong. This is a time for openness and honesty. It's not any longer a question of possibility. It's a question of will. These are not just things that happen to other people. They happen to us. They happen to our families. And they are things that we need to work on. I cannot change what happened to Cal and Pat. However, my family's story is also a story of awakening of passion, of change, and hope for the future. All right, so you can expect to hear more about To Air is Human. As you can see, it's very compelling, it's very touching. It's really addressing a large audience, very, very professionally made. So, um, and it's, it's thought-provoking, but it's not pointing finger, right? It's, it's really solution-driven. There are solutions in other industries, and, and we can fix the system, right? And it's not pointing fingers at individuals. Obviously, it's failure of a system. So uh, we're going to give a lot of visibility to that, uh, to that documentary, so stay tuned. We're going to, uh, uh, we're going to offer viewings uh, pretty soon uh, of that uh, documentary. Now, our second development in terms of patient safety and how we can transfer best practices from aviation safety to patient safety is an event that we organized in our training center for civil aviation in Toronto last week. So interestingly enough, we invited tw 12 decision makers in healthcare physicians or safety officers, people also in the insurance companies, and we expose them uh, uh, in partnership with SimOne, which is the Canadian Network for Simulation and Healthcare. We brought them in a CRM course, so it's a crew or crisis resource management course, something that's very mainstream, uh, that's, that's given on a regular basis to pilots, professional pilots and also pilots in training, and we expose them to that with 
professional commercial aviation pilots in the room. And then we brought the whole group in full flight simulators, right, to expose them to that kind of technology and approach and um, yeah, that is used to improve safety in aviation. So it was thought provoking. Uh, it was very interesting. It was fun. But at the same time, it was very instructive. And we discovered that you know, both industries can learn from each other. And we're going to organize more of these events. So I'll share a video with you. There's going to be some of you flying on the Dornier and some of you flying a Boeing 737. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. All this will be in front of you. Your flight, here's what we're going to do today. All right, we have a checklist exercise. Brakes. Off. Flaps. Set 12, indicating 12. It's my first time uh, in, a, in a cockpit, first time uh, in, a, in an aviation simulator. We're all chatting out there, uh, discussing our fears, our anxieties, our excitement. Better, better than I expected. My brain was led to believe I was actually flying. This, this was a very simple flight profile. It was about as simple as it gets. And even so, with that, I felt, you know, overloaded. I think it was a lot of assisted uh, flying happening in my case, but uh, that it was possible to at least uh, try to implement some of the skills that you learn in a very short time. Easy to uh, recognize when you've, you've lost your situational awareness. I have to believe that this flight simulation has been part and parcel to developing the safety culture of the aviation industry. If we want to change culture, we need to have an opportunity for people to see that culture in action that we're trying to get to in healthcare. We have an experience to share, and our goal is to share it with healthcare. We're just getting started. This is a new format. It's the first time that we put decision makers from healthcare together in a room like that. We're not there to impose our ideas. Quite the opposite. We want to learn from them. What's their perspective? So it was very interesting because many of these safety officers in hospitals and in healthcare, they uh, mentioned that very often they use the analogy with aviation safety, right, and the kind of good best practice to adopt in, in healthcare. So, but it, it's all, you know, information that they get from textbook or articles, and right? they had never really seen what it is in real life. So for them, it was a shock. Uh, we had a few crashes, I must admit, uh, but they had only a. They had a crash course, so that I guess that was relevant. Uh, but it was thought-provoking, and, and certainly we want to build on that and expose more healthcare providers and decision makers in healthcare to what it is really that made aviation safe. So we gathered the feedback from the participants during a debriefing session. You saw that on the video. And we're exploring our next step with CE on board, and we want to expand on this. We have training centers in more than 35 countries, so we're going to organize a few international onboard events. Uh, where we're going to invite people from healthcare to be part of these uh, uh, crew resource management uh, uh, courses done by pilots but adapted to healthcare. So, more to come on that. Now, let's talk a little bit about today's conference. Uh, it's always our goal to present the best of the best, to kind of challenge the status quo and stimulate a conversation about new technology. And as I said yesterday, we're really looking forward to your feedback on the technologies w that we're developing. We need your guidance. We don't just want technology for the wow effect. We really want to fulfill your educational purpose. Today, the topic is ranging from hum human factors to interprofessional education to digital experiences. And we really look forward to engaging with you. We really want also to make sure that we think not only about students uh, in schools, we want to expand into hospitals and you know, be relevant for staff in hospitals. So um, uh, I think that we have a very creative community here. In partnership with you, we want to bring simulation to the next level and elevate education to the professional level. So thank you for coming from all disciplines to have a discussion with us on 
how could education and simulation and healthcare be? How can we bring it to the next level? Thank you for joining us in Nottingham and for making HPSN UK 2018 a success. Thank you for your attention. And now I shall introduce our keynote speaker for this morning. It's Mr.